So I took a break uh, between the last episode and this this one we're getting ready to do here. And when I take a break, I shut everything down because I want my computer to cool off and you know have time to get a rest and shit. So fired everything back up, which means I have to um, reset this recording software to screen share with this particular browser, and which means I got to resize it and put it back up there. Which means I have to go into the episode and start the captions so I can see where I can be without the captions getting cut off. Right? Now, these captions are a little too high because the you can see the screen bar here, right? Like, you know, right there, you see how the screen bar is going across with the red line and shit. That's just because I went over that much to cue this up. So anyway, um, this, this is supposed to be a short story. The point is, when I do this, uh, I have to have captions on the screen, which means I'm going to see what the captions are before watching the episode. Typically not an issue. Sometimes I'll be like, look out, what's behind you? I can't believe, I've never been spoiled like who the killer is or something, or you know, some betrayal, because I don't go that far. And I, I go far enough in where there's two lines of dialogue to make sure I'm not cutting off the top line. And that's about it. But in this particular case, God, after you left, Griffin was unbelievably... And I want to know what the finish... Now, I'm going to watch this, of course. And this isn't a spoiler. He's telling Guts what happened, right? After he left, right? What do you think Griffin was unbelievably? Probably the answer is going to be sad. He was unbelievably sad. But I pre- that, that's my prediction. He's unbelievably sad. But to be funny, let's think of what some other words could be. He was unbelievably dickish. He was unbelievably an asshole after he left. He was unbelievably up in his feelings. He was unbelievably morose. Yeah, that's not funny. Up in his feelings is probably the funniest one. God, after you left, Griffin was unbelievably up in his feelings. <laughs> that's what I'm going with. That's my final answer for the joke response. The real response I'm going to think is sad. Or maybe cold. Or unbelievably alone. Hmm. A lot of interesting choices. If you think about it, like that's a perfect feeder sentence. Sometimes they have writing prompts. They give you a writing prompt. And they feed, give you a, feed, a feeder sentence, and you have to complete the sentence and then keep going, right? This is a very good feeder sentence. There's Because there's so many ways you can go with it, right? Even knowing what's happened before, there's so many ways you can go with it. So let's find out together, shall we? This is episode 21. We're going on one. Three, two, one. You know, I was expecting way more supernatural elements. We've only had the one encounter with the demon. And then the demon threw him a sword at some point. But... <laughs> that's right, motherfuckers. Hey, pretty short recap, man. That's yeah. They didn't have to spend a lot of time on it. So my little count's going to be off now, because there's going to be more minutes left than I thought there was. But, uh, <laughs> it's the old prodigal son story. I was always a faithful son. My brothers were the prodigal sons. And so whenever I read the prodigal son in the Bible, I was always a little bent out of shape about it. It's like, man, this motherfucker was faithful. He was loyal. He was there the whole time. And it even occurred to me, like, when I was thinking of dad at the end, wiping his ass and, you know, all this shit. Just everything I was going through emotionally, just watching him disintegrate in front of my eyes. You know, to be the only son, and he had two other sons and a daughter. You know, two of which, at least two of which were just my half-siblings. But, you know, two other sons and a daughter, none of them stepped up. He had a brother and who had a wife, didn't step up. It was all me. Faithful son, loyal. But when the prodigal son comes home after blowing his part of the inheritance, he gets a fucking big party. I'm a little bitter about that. I'm sure the prodigal son should be bitter. I think we got the wrong message in that Bible for, uh, chapter, man. That's some bullshit. Guess it was a parable, right? Whatever, you know. That story sucks. He's a prodigal son. He's my first been grinding this whole time. Now he's just going to show up? Yeah. We're fucked. The one that killed 100 men. That's what I'm talking about. He's got that rep. Let's stomp these motherfuckers out. They tried to attack us. Yeah, who wants to die first? And who wants to die last? <laughs> yeah, you goddamn right. <laughs> I'm taking requests. Who wants to die first? Who wants to die tenth? And who wants to die last? Line up. 
I'm worth a hundred of any one of you motherfuckers. Let's do this. Even that bitch ass, uh, uh, Kurska, Korska, whatever fuck his name is, has similar to her name. Even that bitch ass is fighting. Y'all motherfuckers in for some trouble. You about to get wrecked. Absolutely fucking wrecked. <laughs> What's up? Ooh, I think you've made a mistake. The red wine will definitely be flowing tonight, motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> you better be scared. Morale's a big thing on on uh, in, in, on the battlefield. Man, I wish I had pause. <laughs> We're scared, sir. Technically, I could pause, record what I want to say, continue, and then put that shit at the end, but... I want to be in the flow of the story. <laughs> That's right, bitch. But morale's a big deal. And sometimes war games, and especially war history, do not reflect the morale of the battlefield. You could be the larger force, but if your morale is shit, you're going to lose. It's that simple. Hey, why don't you ever age, kid? <laughs> What's up? Come back here and take the glory. She's been grinding for a fucking year, man. Man, I hope they come back. I'm ready to stomp some more ass. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure out what the what are you taking, like anti growth hormones or what's what's happening? <laughs> Always love the background audio work. Jesus. We're just a band. Right. Where the fuck is he? <laughs> yeah, he's never late. I smell ambush. Because, of course, they'd know. <clears throat> they would know they would have to take out this group, right? God damn. Yep. Not just low treason or mid mid treason, high treason. Yeah. It's almost like it was a frame job. Depressed. I was close. How much of a cue card is that? Vote below. Is that a whole cue card? Is it a half cue card? I said sad. He said depressed. How much? Tell, let me know how much of a cue card that is. Just in a percentage. And yet it happened right after you left. Because I believe it does have something to do with it. I believe he wouldn't have been with the princess. He wouldn't have been trying to smash if this hadn't just happened. He trying to build his ego back up. Yeah, I remember that part. Thanks. You're a completionist, aren't you? Yeah, it's a special operation. That sounds like some dumb shit. Count me out. <laughs> shit. Well, anybody who's going to desert has. That's clear, right?
So it's like we're rescuing ourselves. And this bitch ass is sitting away from Ray with his back to him. Yeah, there he goes. Kick his ass. I know I'm on the side of the, the, the faithful son, not the prodigal son. But this guy's fucking annoying. He's a he's fucking annoying. Have another drink, asshole. <laughs> I'm leaving again. He hurt my feelings. Oh, shit. Which one more, though? Who did she crowd for more? Who kept track of that? <laughs> she seemed like she was close enough to hear what they were saying. Didn't she? Yeah, dumbass. By the way, I was talking about spoilers last episode. This episode is in a different language. You know, like, um, whatever they're promoting here is in a different language, so I can't see the spoiler this time. They're still talking about Berserk, though, but, like, it's in a different language. So thank you for not spoiling me this time. Oh, shit. This is him in, in the dungeons. Nice time to let him keep his helmet. You know the only thing that's more boring to me than sex scenes? Torture scenes. Boring, man. So fucking boring. We've seen it all, man. Show me something new or just get out. Don't waste my time. This ain't new. And of course they have to talk about not the questions. So, just boring, man. There are exceptions, obviously, but so far this ain't one of them. Oh, you're going to scorch him with a, a hot metal. Never seen that before. We let you keep your jewelry and your helmet. I think that's pretty nice. Now I'm finally going to take it after a year. Probably did something. I, I, I don't remember what the necklace is all about. It, it's a magical charm, right? No way. I think I do remember. It had to do with that demon, didn't it? Hmm. I would look it up, but, you know, spoilers. Hey, fancy meeting you here. Come here often. <laughs> I was just fucking around with some waterfalls. Oh, shit, she's going to kick his ass. <laughs> That's right, bitch. <laughs> Stomp him out. Knock his ass on the ground. She's mad in the motherfucker, man. No, man, there ain't no wait. You fucked up. <laughs> That's right. Hey, what do you think's going on, genius? She's about to light that ass up. That's what's going on. <laughs> oh, this is awkward. Gee, won't you take a wild guess? Like I said, genius. <laughs> you don't think she has a little bit of reason to be pissed? Dumbass. Get his ass. Think about how many people deserted. Probably what, 50%, 60%, 70%. They lost a lot of good people. I still, you know, what's done is done, but I still think the reason this all happened in the first place was because he left. But they were gunning for him anyway. Sooner or later, they were going to get him for something. <laughs> My God, you're a dumbass. <laughs> Man, she's fucking him up. 
<laughs> Look, man, I'm not going to relive to get all this. So that's what we should finish that sentence with. He was lost. Now, I'm going to die from this infection later. Hope you feel good about that. <laughs> Tired of this shit, man. You're just supposed to be his slave forever? Like, what the fuck, man? Like I said, I'm not going to really look at this. It's ridiculous. Griffin's expectation was ridiculous, and her expectation is ridiculous. <laughs> Dumbass. Now I'm on his side. I was on her side. <laughs> He definitely died from this infection. I've seen Game of Thrones. Motherfuckers died from infections. The sanitation back then was fucking dubious, man. Y'all were nasty. Yeah, it's bullshit, I tell you. Of course. That's why he was trying to smash. But now we gotta kill them all. Everybody just shows up in their feelings, man. It's about their feelings. Pretty much. Now she's going to bounce when he comes back, right? Yeah, you can't have your work be your identity. What's she going to try to do? Don't tell me she's trying to jump in this water. You got plunged to her death. Well, like you said, man, you should be trying to get some sleep. Dumbass. Now I know people can, somebody else can lead the group. I'm out of here. If only a log going down a uh, fucking uh, waterfall could solve this. What do you do, catch her? Yeah, <laughs> nicely played, sir. And using his injured arm. You know, that's got to sting. <laughs> what the actual fuck? <laughs> Damn, my arm hurts. <laughs> Y'all too, so melodramatic, man. Up in your fucking feelings, man. You know, maybe it has something to do with you swinging your fucking sword. You know, maybe there's a cause and effect relationship here. <laughs> Sometimes we don't realize how tightly we're holding on to a situation until somebody comes along and takes a package from us, you know, whatever weight we're holding. And it's like, oh, shit. Then you see, like, you know, the metaphor being imagine, like, a uh, plastic bag from a grocery store. It's filled with very heavy cans, right? Yeah, he made him sad. I knew she wanted to hit that. I mean, I'm not saying the show was trying to hide it.
Oh, he's hitting that. Getting blood all over the place. He's definitely going to get an infection now. I mean, he's rolling around in the dirt and shit. I have to say this is less boring than most sex scenes simply because it's they're doing it artistically, right? And she's got her little, you know, monologue over it. And still photographs shit. That, that's an interesting way to do that. Hell no, man. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you might. Of course, I wasn't very clear before I hit that. Then I have to cut Griffith's sword off again. <laughs> this dude, man. This dude. You should have told me before you fucked me. Ha 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 ha. Kick his ass. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, you can come with me. I didn't say you couldn't. <laughs> no, I'm not speaking metaphorically. I mean, uh, you know, literally. Finally. Jesus Christ, man. How, how fucking hard was that? I didn't say you couldn't come. <laughs> I think they're both pretty dumb, but, you know. This dude, he's never been known for his intellect. He doesn't have a PhD in, like, you know, cosmology or anything, right? He swings a fucking sword and be murking motherfuckers. He's got biceps on his biceps. Like, he's not exactly a road scholar here, you know. So, I don't think calling him dumb is an insult. Well, that's a log we can fuck on now. Oh. Oh, shit. Oh, the demon's probably back, man. Finally, man. We're on episode 21. Jesus, it's about time the fucking hellhounds come back. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Look at this. What the actual fuck? Damn. I see. Interesting. Maybe th this being removed from him caused him to be allowed to come. I can't. I remember them talking about it. It's been a while since I saw that episode. I don't remember the specific uh, significance of that necklace, but I do remember it's significant. Yeah. You'll be a real boy one of these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this kid's are right. That sounds unnecessarily complicated, man. Now we're talking. So you're um you're carrying a bag, right? And this is um like I said, one of these plastic bags. And it's got some heavy cans in it. And you're carrying it for a long time. And you don't notice, like, you, you're obviously aware that it's heavy and it's a problem. But you have other shit in your other hand and you, you can't really be switching them up and everything. So you're just carrying this shit, carrying it, carrying it, carrying it. And finally, somebody comes up and like, you're not carrying anything. You're like, hey, man, let me grab that bag for me. And so they take it from you, right? Only then, and I didn't really hold it long enough to do this, but usually you have, like, a white mark here where there's no blood. And it's kind of dug into your skin a little bit, so there's like a groove there now. And it's bright red on both sides, right? Once they take this weight off of you, all the blood rushes back to that spot. And now it really fucking hurts. Maybe it hurt a little bit before. Now it really hurts. 
that's a metaphor for what's happening with her. Like, she was able to get through day by day because, yes, she's been carrying this weight for a long time, and yes, it's her, she, but, like, it's not until the burden has been taken from you and the blood rash, rushes back into that spot do you realize how bad it's been. And this is the case for, like, a lot of trauma and a lot of situations people are in. Until somebody can help them, they don't realize how bad they had it. You know, and then the blood rushes in the spot, and then you're in a lot of pain. Sometimes you can lash out. I've seen it before. So, you know, you, you just lash out. Like, God damn, you know, you can't take it anymore. That's why this writing in this episode was so good, because that's, that's what I took from it. That's where I get, other than the obvious surface level shit she's talking about, where she was, realized after the fact she was in love with him or whatever. The pressure of keeping this group together, the ones who would stay together, and making sure she doesn't make one wrong move to get everybody killed. That pressure was so constant. She, it wasn't until some of that had been taken off her that she realized how bad it was. So, good shit. 